man, man, man. Today is a special day, man. It is April 1st, 2024, man. And today we hit 1K on the channel. And I'm not going to lie. It was tough. It was tough, man. They had some times I was thinking about, man, why am I even doing this? Growth was not coming as fast as I thought it would, but we here. <laughs> we here, man. Appreciate y'all. Everybody that support the channel, that like the channel, future supporters, future subscribers, man. I appreciate y'all in advance. Love y'all. But today, hey, we got something special for you. I've been getting a lot of requests and recommendations. Today, we're checking out Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, a courtship of rivals basketball. I already know, man, it's going to be a lot of fire, action pack, intense moments in this video, man. It's an hour and 27 minutes long. I don't know if I'm be able to sit through the whole thing, but we'll see how far we get today. Of course, it's a work night. But like I said before, man, I appreciate y'all. Like y'all don't realize, man, words can't describe how much I appreciate you. So we gonna keep on trugging along, man. Let's go ahead, man, and get into the video. They talk about it every day, somewhere. If I go to a foreign country, magic, magic, what magic? It's the same everywhere. We don't have to see each other. We don't have to say hello. We don't have to call each other. That's my main competition. It's always been like that. You know you got this tight bond with this cat, and you don't have to see him for a year or two. Um, but you're always going to be linked to him. Let me know y'all hear this good. It's never going to be broken. I mean, right to our graves. They'll be talking about this 100 years from now. It all began here in Salt Lake City, Utah, on the night of March 26, 1979. It was the NCAA championship, Indiana State versus Michigan State, a game that still ran. And I tell y'all what, man, like it's crazy. And I've actually been doing my research, been watching plenty of videos, um, and I know a little bit of basketball also, but this game that they're about to make reference to for any basketball event that's been televised on any level, this is still to this day, 45 years later, the most highly rated basketball event in NBA history. And that's crazy. So it kind of show you that from this very day, it just shaped the landscape of basketball as a whole. You got players nowadays that's playing basketball, making the money that they make now with how popular the game is today due to this game with Larry Bird and Magic Johnson facing off in the NCAA final in 79, man. So it just goes to show you how much weight this moment actually holds. And um, with this being a documentary, I know this is probably going to be the most detailed video I've ever seen on this event by far. So I don't know. I'm excited, man. Let's go ahead and get into it. Ranks is the highest rated college final ever on television. A game that's now remembered is a prologue to a rivalry that transformed a sport and intertwined two legacies. But on that night, March 26, 1979, the first time Magic Johnson and Larry Bird ever went head to head on a basketball court, they were simply two young men trying to win a very big ball game. <laughs> 
Well, this is probably the biggest game I'll ever play in my life, and I just feel like, you know, I'm representing not only myself, my team, but we're representing our school and our, and our town of Terre Haute. Well, it's uh, a dream come true, really, for me. Uh, I won the state title back in my home state, and then my next accomplishment was going to the NCAA and playing in uh, a game like tonight in the finals. They were two stars thrown together by the cosmos to compete. But only one of them had been groomed for the spotlight. In his case, it seemed since birth. I think his upbringing. First of all, shout out to Magic Johnson, man. <laughs> shout out to Magic Johnson, man. Personally, you know, I'm a Lakers fan. I mean, if y'all already seen the previous reaction videos I've been doing on the Larry Bird series so far, man. I'm a Magic Johnson fan, man. And it's just because I'm Team Lakers. Don't hate on me, don't hate me for it. I have my preferences. I have my opinions, okay? I got love for Larry Bird. Don't get it twisted. But Magic Johnson, he's Showtime, man. He is Showtime. So with all due respect, just had to let it be known for the ones that don't know. Anyway, let's get back to the video. In East Lansing, really put that smile on his face in the beginning, and, and it never came off. Born August 14, 1959, Irvin Johnson grew up in Lansing, the gritty industrial capital city of Michigan. Raised under this little roof, he was one of Christine and Irvin Johnson Sr.'s 10 kids. Christine was a school custodian, while Irvin Sr. worked two jobs nearly around the clock. My father, he got up early every morning, six o'clock or so, and uh, he went to work on his trash hauling truck every single day. Around noon, he would come home, catch a nap, and then he worked for General Motors for 30 years. And he won an award for never being late and never uh, missed a day. As a youngster, oh wow, his own strong <laughs> hey man, workout. hey, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Nowadays, bro, that's loyalty, man. That is, first of all, shout out to Irving Mag Johnson Sr. Well, I'm saying Irving Mag Johnson, but you get the point. <laughs> shout out to him, shout out to him. Never missing a day, never being late. That is the ultimate loyalty that you don't find nowadays because uh, huh, I've missed quite a few days myself, man. I'm not going to lie to you, man. I know how difficult it is. So anyway, man, I'm not condoning being late and missing days, but um, hey, 30 years, that's impressive. Ethic on the blacktop. I was out there all day. Before we went to school, the bus leave at 7, 7.30. I was out there at 6, 6.30 working on my game. My mother sometimes had to bring me food, or she would have one of my brothers and sisters go get that boy so he could eat something. From a very young age, Irvin knew what he wanted to do. He had it all planned out. My dreams were to play in the NBA and become a businessman. The first neighborhood basketball powerhouse, Sexton High. I knew the players, I knew the tradition. I wanted to be a part of that. And it was on the west side of town, which was at that time predominantly black. But when Lansing, like many cities in the mid 70s, began busing to desegregated school system, Irvin's journey took an unexpected detour to a predominantly white school across town. My first day at Everett High School was my first time I really had to understand there was a, a race problem. Nobody white would speak to anybody black, and nobody black would speak to anybody white. A lot of racial tension, a lot of fights, rioting. They didn't want minorities there. He kind of shrugged it off, and basically his attitude was, OK, well, I'll, I'll overcome this. Whenever there was any racial problems, the principal would get Irvin and go talk to these kids. I can just see him with his big hands, calm down, just calm down. He'd break up fights. He talked with his friends, telling him, you know, let it go. You know, we can't fight about everything. Let's just chill. Let's play basketball. And there was no dispute over Irvin Johnson's ability to play ball. His talent was so great that soon after his varsity debut, a local reporter, dazzled by his exploits, gave the budding star a nickname. In the beginning, I thought it was foolish and dumb. You know, I didn't know nothing about a nickname. Then what happened was, 
you start saying, wait a minute, it fits my game. Hanging out with my boys on the street corners, we used to sing Temptation songs. They start saying, hey man, Magic, that's cool. And then people on the street start saying, hey Magic. And I said, hmm. <laughs> 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 he bought into it and um, I think he felt he had to kind of live up to that name. And I must say that he did. He loved it. The more attention he got, you know, he just, he wanted attention from anybody he could get it from. <laughs> First of all, man, <laughs> hey, shout out to Magic, bro. <laughs> I'm not going to keep on trying to stop this video to say shout out to Magic, man, but just to kind of like put into perspective um, everything that he had to overcome in that span, man, 60s, you know, um, early 70s, mid 70s. There was a lot of racial tension. It was kind of hard to maneuver around as a black man in those times and actually be successful and actually be accepted and um, to be looked at with respect. That's even more reason why I think it's impressive that he was able to accomplish what he did. And also they had some music playing, so I was a little concerned about the copyright. I had to pause it, but <laughs> anyway, man, let's get back to the video. Yeah, it does. Um, I really love the game and uh, I just want to win. Gets it over and back and he jams it through. Irvin loved to dress. Nice sandal belt and pants and overcoats with the, the fur around the collar. Always had to have his afro blown out. He had to look the part, play the part. Irvin was the first guy to have a posse. He not only had a posse of a lot of black kids, he had a lot of white kids and hanging around him. Some of my white friends were like, hey man, uh, we're having a kegger tonight, won't you come on by? And I am said, what's a kegger? So he said, well, what it is, we get this big keg of beer, <laughs> and you just go for it. Okay, well, what time does the, the kegger start? Because regular party time in our neighborhood is 10, 11 o'clock. Uh, the kegger starts at 7. I said, the party starts at 7 o'clock? Oh, wow. Said, okay, man, I'm going to come to the kegger. We had a good time. The music was kind of bad, but we had a good time. So. <laughs> His senior year, Johnson did at Everett what he had planned to do at Sexton, win the state championship. And when it came to choosing a college, he decided to stay where the love would be assured, home in Lansing. Next year, I will be uh, attending Michigan State University. At MSU, Magic's star quickly went national. But atop the college game, he soon discovered a certain presence beside him. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Check this out. That is probably, I say, top 10 Sports Illustrated covers of all time, bro. Not gonna lie. Shout out to Larry Bird. Shout out to Larry Bird, man. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Look at the cover. Like I say, look at it. Look at it. He got the honeys. He looking like, yeah, I'm that dude. I'm that guy. But uh, shout out to Larry Bird, man. Let's get back to the video. The first time I saw Larry Bird was actually in a magazine. Saw his stats. Blown away by his stats. But let's see if he can really do it against us. And that's always a mindset of black players if he's a great white player. In 1978, after his freshman year, Magic would quickly find out when both he and Bird were chosen to play for Team USA in the World Invitational Tournament. They would put Larry Bird and I on the same team together to scrimmage, right? It, it was blowing my mind because he's dominating Jack Givens, player of the year in college basketball. Larry Bird is eating him alive. <laughs> I couldn't wait to call home and oh. tell my boys, man, this dude named Larry Bird is for real. Oh. This is the baddest white dude I've ever seen in my life. Well, I thought he was very good. There's no question about it. I Actually, I thought he was probably the best guard on the team. Irvin Johnson. Look at Ooh, that. hey. We didn't get to play a lot, but you could tell. I ain't gonna lie, man. Hey, W highlights. W highlights. I think our first game was in Kentucky. We got about a 10, 12-point lead. Man, they put us in. 
went to 25, 30, just that fast. Fast break again, three on two, Griffith. Whoa. Oh, y'all know about Griffith. Larry Bird. Take us out, the league go back down, put us back in. That's Bird and Johnson. The show started again. When you play with Magic, there's just something about it. You want to make that extra pass. You want to get that rebound and start to break. We came down a couple times. I go behind my back, no look to him. He no look back Ooh. to me. And I'm playing, and I'm playing. Oh, There's that last play. Magic Johnson going in, drops off the bird. Bird puts it back. Uh, uh. Super bad. This guy got game. That's tough. They had some wonderful moments on the court but they probably spoke to each other four, maybe five times during that entire time period. And, and it was more like, hello, how are you this morning, Larry? I'm good, Magic. What'd you have for <laughs> breakfast? Don't remember. Have a nice day. But such curtness. First of all, man, shout out to that dialogue. Because personally, man, it's kind of how I am, man, with people I'm not really familiar with that I don't know. I have neighbors on the street that I live on. And that is how all of my conversations go. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's happening? Oh, nothing much. Move on about my day. You know, I, I'm not more um, of a sociable guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm always on the run. I'm always moving. So I could kind of relate. I, I see how two people that don't really know each other well, just kind of quick to the point, a little small talk, keep it pushing. You know what I'm saying? Respect. Don't force it if it ain't there. You dig? But anyway, let's get back to the video. This was hardly strange coming from Larry Bird, who is not only one of college basketball's best players, but also its biggest enigma. I think he was a mystery to the extent that, that, that he wanted to be a mystery. He didn't enjoy doing interviews. He didn't go out of his way to do them. He wasn't particularly good at them. He was kind of like, hey, this is who I am. You want to know who I am? Watch the game. That's who I am. I start to read materials that you're very quiet and you don't enjoy talking to newspaper people. Well, you know, there's different kind of newspaper paper people. Uh, there's uh, people that try to push you. You know, there's people try to get things out of you. Things don't even pertain to basketball. And then the type of people I like to stay away from. He didn't want people talking about his family. He didn't want his mother to have to deal with that or his siblings to have to deal with that. You got to remember where Larry came from. You know, Larry was raised in a two or three room house on a railroad track. Their family probably lived on $50 a week. He was raised tough. Larry Joe Bird grew up in southern Indiana, in the twin towns of French Lick and West Baden. The valley, as locals call it, was a tough working class area. Tiny and remote, it was one of the poorest places in the state. I didn't know that people made millions of dollars. I didn't know that everybody had a family car. I was in my own cocoon. I was in a small town with the people I knew, and I thought I'd live there for the rest of my life. Arriving Pearl Harbor Day, 1956, Larry was the fourth of six kids born to Georgia and Joe Bird. Early on, he and his older brothers earned a reputation around the valley. We were always considered troublemakers. We're either fighting amongst ourselves, or there was always one of us fighting somebody. Larry was always one that kind of instigated things, you know. <laughs> if I get my brother in a fight with somebody his age, I was happy as hell, because I like to see him get beat up, and that's just the way it was. <laughs> if, if I got in a, a scrape with some kid, and my brothers didn't come to my side, they knew that when he got home, my dad was going to whip him. Larry and my dad were best of friends. They done everything together. When my dad would go out to my grandma's house. Larry would always go with him. They'd go fishing, do a lot of things together. But Joe Bird also had a darker side, stemming from a traumatic tour of duty in Korea. Larry remembers waking up in the middle of the night hearing his father's blood-curdling screams from the nightmares he had had from the war. What happened to his father in the war affected his entire life. He was never able to quite get rid of whatever those demons were. A talented craftsman, Joe Bird struggled to hold steady jobs. First of all, man, hey, anybody that ever served, shout out to you. <laughs> shout out to you, man, for real, man. Um, I don't think we really appreciate all of the sacrifice that anybody that's ever served, especially in those type of traumatic events, man, you know, uh, Pearl Harbor, um, any world war, 
you know, you got um, Korea War, you know, like those people that experience that have to live with that forever. And just the fact that they did that in order for us to have the security that we have, the freedom that we have um, to be as secure as we are. I, I think we're forever in debt, honestly, man. So like I said, another one. Shout out to y'all. Any veteran, man, like I said, man, we, we definitely appreciate y'all on this side, man. Anyway, let's get back to the video. And even when he was working, his demons would on occasion drive him to the bottle. There were times when Joe went out with the guys and had a few beers and the wages didn't come home that night. And that didn't happen every day. Uh, it happened once in a while, but when money is as tight as it was for the birds, once in a while was a major problem for their family. My mom sometimes worked late, and sometimes she had two jobs, but that's the way it was. I worked at school during my lunch hours, worked at the local grocery store, put up hay in the summer. I mean, if you wanted money, you had to get it on your own. To young Larry, actions spoke louder than words. He was very quiet, kind of hung to himself a little bit. I saw Larry take an F in an English class because he had to get up in front of his peers and give a speech. He said, I won't do it. But he just could not get up in front of his friends and talk. He was that shy. Of course, next thing you know, when he knew it was time for all of us together at the gymnasium, well, there he'd be. The minute he'd get a basketball in his hand, things were totally different. Basketball was just, it came to me, seemed like easy. I didn't have the quickness. I didn't have jumping ability. I just thought the game out. By his senior year at Springs Valley High, Larry Bird had sprouted into a star. But Bird was from the Valley, hardly a hotbed of talent in the big time world of Indiana hoops. The first thing they say, well, they don't play nobody down there. He's from French Lick. They don't play nobody. I think that put a chip on his shoulder, always having to prove who he was and how good he was. He was good enough for Indiana University's Bobby Knight to come calling late his senior year. And folks in the Valley couldn't have been prouder. Their local hero was heading 60 miles north to play ball for one of the best college teams in the land. Once I got to IU, it didn't take long to realize that I was out of my cocoon. I had over 30-some thousand students that I didn't have the funds. First week and a half, I thought, man, this ain't gonna work. He left after 24 days. Let my mother down. She didn't talk to me for two months. But it didn't matter what other people said. It's, to this day, I don't care. Back in French Lick, Bird took to working for the city, hauling trash and painting park benches. Man. Meanwhile, by that winter, his father's demons had taken him to an even darker place. By this point, Joe and George I'm not going to lie, bro. Um, man, for those of y'all that actually recommended that I watch this video, man, I can see why there is such love and admiration for Larry Bird, man, with his upbringing, with all he had to overcome, um, being poor, going through poverty. He had the chance of a lifetime to play for Coach Bobby Knight but he didn't have the funds. <sighs> Man, some people could relate. Like you have countless amounts of talent that's out there in the world today. And due to money, <laughs> they're not able to flourish and, and branch out and, and become what they're able to become just because of money. You know, it's, it's, it's a sad world we live in, man. It's all about the almighty dollar in order for you. And, and that restricts you. You know, if you don't have enough, it's tough for you to go far. You know, it's a million chances that you may fail. And it's a very slim chance that you actually succeed. So just the fact that watching this, seeing all that Larry Bird went through, going through the poverty, his dad having um, these demons that he's fighting against. Man, it, it makes you really... Want to root for Larry Bird, especially knowing this, man. So uh, anyway, um, 
Video's going to be on a little bit on the long end. I'm definitely going to have to do parts because I'm talking a lot. But uh, let's go ahead and try to get to the 25-minute mark, man, and see how far we get, man. So let's get back to the video. And he was behind in his payments to the family. The police came by, and of course, they all knew him. So Joe said, hey, I need a few hours to get my affairs together before you take me away. So he called Georgia, and he said, you guys will be better off without me, and I'm going to take my life. And he put the phone down, and, and he killed himself. He shot himself. Oh, my goodness. Passed, you know, it hurt Larry. I mean, that was his best friend. He's gone now. And But Larry didn't show it a lot. He just didn't say much. You know, he just kind of held it within. I never, I've never heard him speak out about it at all. I was mad when I heard about it. And... I was madder after the funeral because I thought he sort of cut out on us during a, a tough time. But you know, he went he went through a lot in his life. He did what he had to do. If Bill Hodges hadn't been as persistent as he had been, Larry Bird might never have existed in any of our minds. I believe that with all my heart. I really do. It was Bill Hodges a young coach from Indiana State University who convinced Bird to give college hoops another shot. So with a promise to his mom to graduate, Bird headed to Terre Haute and ISU, a school that never so much had been to the NCAA tournament. Once I started playing, it's the same old thing. You know, he's at a small school and he ain't playing against anybody, <clears throat> which is fine. Still dominated. <laughs> Wherever the Hoosiers gather, they no longer talk of weather. Indiana has a new state of birth. Now his claim to fame is just the way he plays the game. Indiana has a new state of birth. It's not the Cardinal now. Hey, Larry, take a bow. Indiana has a new state of birth. By the time he had led tiny ISU as a senior to a 33-0 record and a spot in the 79 title game, Larry Bird had become, alongside Magic Johnson, the talk of college basketball. Just a year after sharing the court on Team USA, they were back together. And the day before the big game, Magic couldn't wait to greet his old playmate. Indiana State was on practicing, and we were waiting in the tunnel. We got there early. I wanted to definitely say hello to Larry, you know. When they came through, it was like nobody was saying nothing. I wanted to go toward him, like his guys, like made sure that he didn't say nothing. And then they kind of start snickering, like, Michigan State, you in trouble. We're going to kill you guys tomorrow. I probably did snub him. I don't remember it, but I'm, I'm sure I did. I didn't want any... You know, like I call it love fest, hugging and, and, and slapping high fives with opponent. You're there for a reason. You're there to win a game. That just said it's on. I wish more people thought like that, man. You know, people talk about sportsmanship. It works to a certain extent, man, but when you're in competition, I am trying to annihilate you. I'm not trying to be friends with you. Now, hey, whenever I win the game, after the math, you know, hey, we'll shake hands. We'll talk. We'll fellowship. But uh, beforehand, I'm trying to take your head off. Hey, that's a Larry Bird mentality, man. I, I see what y'all did recommending this video, man. Y'all think y'all slick, but y'all not. But anyway, <laughs> go get right back into it. On now. It is Indiana State against Michigan State. I'm Bryant Dumble, and the fans here are going bananas. Y'all think y'all gonna turn me, huh? Y'all, hey, that's what y'all try to do with this video right here. Y'all, oh, y'all try to turn? No, ain't happening. Ride with magic to the end. I mean, let's face it. If, if Larry Bird were black and, and came from Chicago, it wouldn't have been as big a deal. They, they were, they were polar opposites. One black, one white, one outgoing, one shy. That was the charm of the attraction. The bird against magic. All of the superlatives have been used, and believe me, all of them have been warranted. Heading into First the of all, shout out to Brian Gumbel. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go ahead and get back to the video. 
Magic was the bigger star. But by tip-off, it was Bird, having hardly missed a shot in the semifinal, who had become the focus of fans, and more importantly, of Michigan State. We actually had two men on Larry everywhere he went. There he is, Dick. Look at they have him sandwiched in completely. I'm surprised they didn't play a box on one, you know, four guys on Larry and one on the other four. <laughs> um, because that's they didn't have a lot of talent. You know, if you stop Larry, you pretty much stop them. Look at the pressure around him. Two, three, men, and he's short. I didn't play well at all. Biggest game of my life, I didn't play well. I think our, our length and our size, our jumping ability was able to bother him. Bird hanging, can't score. I didn't shoot well, missed, uh, I think, three free throws. Larry Bird has had a cold shooting night. I battled him, but I didn't have it. Mm. For now. Hey! Michigan State University, national champions, 1979. Magic, not only were you a leader on offense, I thought you did a great job on Larry Bird in the zone denying him the ball. Yes, uh, Coach uh, gave us a good game plan to go against Larry Bird, and all we had to do was go out and do it. That's what we've done. And congratulations, Super Bowl game. It was over, you know. That was my four years. I was done. You know, it still hurts. And when you win 33 in a row and you walk into a game, you know, you never know what to expect. But Thank you, Invincible. I expect to win. We didn't win. Toughest loss I ever took. I knew it was going to haunt him forever because we were going to see each other a lot. Two men. All right, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up right here, man, for part one. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't do a whole video in one, man, because, like, we're already... 32 minutes in, man. If I do a whole reaction the way I do reactions, man, of this video, one sitting, it's probably going to be a two, three hour video, man. But uh, anyway, I appreciate y'all checking this out and I appreciate y'all recommending this video. What are my takeaways? Both guys had to overcome adversity. Larry Bird's adversity that he had to overcome is relatable if you're not from a middle class family or from a first class family you know anybody that um personally i could relate a little bit um my parents worked really hard really hard and we weren't rich we always had what we needed that's for a fact but for me like if i wanted to go to school like college or something like that i had to make my own money if I wanted to buy a car, I had to make my own money. You know what I'm saying? So I could kind of relate to what Larry Bird was saying. Like, hey, anything that you wanted, you had to work for it. And that was the way I came up. Whatever we wanted, we had to grind and get it. You know, there, there were rare occasions where we got gifts. So, I, I mean, I could I could personally kind of relate to Larry Bird. Um, but, man, it's... Whew, strong start to the series, man. But anyway, I'm going to try to do this in four parts. Appreciate y'all getting this far in the video. If you stuck around to this point, love you. Thank you again. Like, like, man, I'm trying not to get choked up, man. But um, anybody that been rocking with me, man, since day one, I really appreciate y'all. Anybody that's joined along, the family, the community in the past month or so i appreciate y'all like like i don't think y'all realize how much this means you know being able to reach 1k get monetized i got twins on the way you know like um i work really hard so it's, it's tough to do this i was i was being a caregiver um for a long time while trying to juggle making videos and working my job and, and stuff like that man so just the fact that we've been able 
to get to this point. And I know a lot of people not going to stick around to this point to hear what I got to say. But for those of y'all that do, I love y'all from the bottom of my heart. I, I mean that. I mean that. I appreciate y'all. We're going to get back on with the series soon. Love you. Peace.